podcast. Gummy's Rubber Boots Podcast. We want to thank you for listening. We're sure you never thought we'd last. Oh, no. We're going to talk nothing, very little sports with your host, Jimmy, Jamie, your James. And now you know for sure that it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. Oh, yeah. This is the podcast. Not just any ordinary edition of the Rubber Boots Pod. The Trade Center Preview Edition. I'm sure Stoff is going to in post lay some dramatic Trade Center Preview Edition music. Trade Center Preview Edition. We are going in direct competition with the Bobcast Trade Center Preview, which has Bob McKenzie, Darren Drager, <laughs> and Pierre Lebrun. This I is like the one chances, they all want. But you have you have Stoff, Lester, Lester and Puff. Puff. Yeah. Yes. The real insiders. Welcome back, Puff. Oh, thanks yeah. to be back. Nice to be back. Before Puffy's we get to our... Puffy's back. Puffy's yeah. back. Um, how was... Uh, you we, You either died or went to Costa Rica. We weren't sure which was yes, it. Yes, I went to Costa Rica, a beautiful country in Central America. Right. Vida Vida. With my family and my extended family. Right. You went to Tamarindo. Tamarindo, the surfer's paradise. Is it the surfer's paradise? Yeah. It's, it's what's, I mean, it's not Hawaii. Did you see Keanu Reeves or Patrick Swayze? No, I did not see them on a sign. Were they robbing banks? But the surfers are all very good looking, whether it's male or female. You mean you like must get the tourist surfers or the locals? Well, the, I'm guess, I mean, they might not be from, from right. local. Did you feel region. intimidated? Yeah, I mean, I just figure if I do three months of surfing, I'm going to have a ripped body. The core work must just be unbelievable up there. Did Tanya's oh. eye wander a little bit? I'm sure it did. <laughs> As did mine. <laughs> oh, so there was. Let's just uh, say you don't get used. To, you never get used to seeing bare asses everywhere you walk on a beach. You mean wow. like, like naked asses or just g-strings? G-strings. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It's a good thing. Do you want to get into any more detail for us? Uh, no. no. Was there any earlobe action on the? There was no. No, I'm in a little bit of a penalty box when it comes yeah. to. Um, right. As Puff uh, was mentioning this to me the other night, uh, Lester. He is getting neutered. Yes. Ooh. Yes. I'm getting. I'm going under the knife. Right. And so. Um, t- but why now? Why are you can't? So you're not getting any. Yes. Love until, making until I get fixed. Is it a threat or? Is I think she- it's a threat because I think Tanya knows that. I only deal really well with deadlines. I need hard deadlines. <laughs> yes, you do. I've learned that as well. Yes. So, if uh, well left up to my own devices, I continue to put things off. So, had you pondered having another child? You have two beautiful boys right yeah, now. Yeah, I. I don't think I ever have seriously considered it, but she has. She did early on because I think she wanted a girl. Oh, okay. Mm. And uh, but now she's, you know, she's. Not interested in that at so all. So do you have a date for your... Uh... March 1st, I'm right. uh, doing my con- consultation. Consultation. Right. Uh, but I'm ready to go right right away. Like well, of course. You want to do yeah, some action. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now, I do, I've never gone through it. Uh, do they cut off your balls? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm led to believe that uh, it's a tiny incision. Okay. And then they there's some there's some stuff they do that they cut. Dregs was telling me about it, and he said it's like looks like spaghetti. Your, pe- your they, penis looks like no, spaghetti. No, I guess the little tubes and stuff that are in there that oh, the go around get side yeah. nipped. Yeah, your testicles. and uh, and then there's uh, a lot of pain afterwards. Some people say not so bad. Some people say agony. Greg and... says you he uh, did too much active movement right after he felt good. <laughs> so I think he did some lawn work or something. And he said it was a nightmare. He was Perhaps in some agony. L- some lunges. Yeah. <laughs> nobody well, ever, good. nobody but, else on the rubber boot spot, I believe, has been uh, has, has been, been fixed yet, right? Stoff has not well, had after all those kids I've had. <laughs> yes, it was about time. <laughs> That's right. I'm still spreading my seeds, son. Huh? <laughs> but no, I'm, just I, I'm looking forward to it because I'm assuming once you can't get any women pregnant, you're allowed to have sex with as many women as possible. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that sounds, is uh, that the contract? That's, that's what I've always figured. That's, that's my how understanding. It works. You see, I uh, was supposed to have it done, and um, my wife had three C-sections. Yes. And so on the third C-section, when we decided there was going to be no more children, uh, she said, you have to have it done. And I said, well, I've heard that the, when they're doing the C-section, they can just do a little, yeah, and it's done. So... And she said, no, I want you to go through the pain. That's what t- that wow. basically the same thing happened for us. Mm-hmm. But, then, but what happened was, you see, and this is the key, uh, they drug you up to do the C-section. Yes. So she was all drugged up on the table. And you're in that moment of getting drugged up and yeah. they're pulling out the baby. And the doc said, uh, do you want me to tie yeah. the tubes? Like, just really easy. And she was drugged up. So she's like, yeah, just do it. And so I'm still fully capable. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. So I figure if Brooksy ever gets smart and leaves me, yeah. then I might be like one of those Anthony Quinn characters You'll who has the... like three more kids at 75. Wow. I'll be pretty right? good. That sounds like an A-O- A-O- yeah. A-hole or A-OK moment. Quite but, but I guess you have six weeks post-surgery. Okay. And then you got to go back and get retested. Do they put you out or they just freeze you? Freeze you. Could you um, get your little voice memo folder? Either yeah. w- I was saying, first we could do the pod live from the room. Yeah. Or you could at least tape <laughs> yourself as you're going through it. Sure. I can do that. That would be fantastic. Hi, it's me, Puffy. Oh, hey. oh that, that stings. <laughs> that hurts a little bit. Yeah, it's frozen. Yeah, it's, it'll, it's frozen it'll, down there. It'll, it'll oh. definitely... Uh, Am I ever oh. gonna feel it again? Oh. oh no! There's apparently there's no problems, and it's I guess pos- it's well, it's six weeks or twenty. Oh well, then finishes. what you can do then get your voice memo folded back out and tape the first time you make love afterwards to let us know. First time I make it's love working, for- guys! It's working. <laughs> oh, first time, okay. first time myself that I make. Yeah, love. I know Tanya won't be there, yeah. but just hey guys, give us- it's me. My voice has changed a little bit, <laughs> yeah. but I feel great. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, we have a big Trade Center preview ahead, and uh, we have a bit of a deadline today, as we did last week. Uh, we'll have the uh, finishing of the Scott Reynolds um, Berlin nightclub um, cliffhanger, cliffhanger that yes. we were left with. Yes. We'll ask the questions and get the answers at the end of the pod. Uh, but it's the Trade Center preview. Uh, Puffy and I both have to bail early today. So let's get to the Roddy recap brought to you by iDrinkCoffee.com. When it came to Puff's absence, Lester did not mince words on episode 19. I had a fun time last week. I enjoyed that pod. No offense to Puffy, but, you know. Luckily, Puff took it well. Oh, okay. With Puff out of the picture, Lester turned his focus to rebranding the podcast, starting with a new slogan. We talk about balls a lot in this show. At this point, even Roddy needed some clarification. Do you have a problem with penis talk? (laughs) Pardon me for trying to put my best foot forward. (laughs) Perhaps a foot's a bit modest. Nevertheless, if needed, Roddy can opine till the cows come home. A dream that uh, countless women have had. Unfortunately, things haven't been as dreamy for James, who clearly hasn't gotten over the NHL deal, as evident in his latest song titled, Gary. You just turn and walk away, you won't get very far, cause you took everything I had, and all you left behind were scars. The boys thought maybe setting up a chat with Gary could help clear the air on this betrayal, but Duffy wasn't having it. We need a Venom uh, a venom snake expert on <laughs> I guess some things are just better left in the past. Till next time, kids. <laughs> Roddy. <laughs> wow. Roddy. It's a bit of a cheap shot, Rod. Yeah, wow. that's not fair whatsoever. Wow. We've adjusted well. Yes. The network's thrived and survived. It's time as for as, our... as long as we get Canada gold medal games. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. I don't feel as secure in my job as you guys do, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's our Trade Center preview brought to you by our friends at uh, Puckpedia.com. Hart sent me some new copy. Oh. New copy to read. Nice. nice. Keep it uh, fresh. Yeah, he kept it kept it fresh. Puckpedia, the ultimate source for hockey fans and professionals. Everything you want on one site. Contract and salary cap info. Basic and advanced stats. Player dashboard. Agent leaderboard. Agent pages and more. With trade deadline approaching, Puckpedia wants to hear your best Rubber Boots crew trade proposals. I.e. Puffy trading the rights to Murder Island for Rod Smith's commercial royalties and a favor to be named later. James, trading three interns and bump to Jay and Dan for exclusive use of stuff. I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's a that's a ripoff. Send your proposals to at Puckpedia on Twitter. Yes, this is a fairly obvious and transparent attempt to get more Twitter followers for at Puckpedia. <laughs> I don't know if I was supposed to read that part, but I did. Visit Puckpedia.com, follow on Twitter, at Puckpedia. And for Trade Center, watch TSN on your TV or device, and then Puckpedia.com. Have it open on your phone and laptop. And as the TSN insiders break a deal, you can quickly see the contract cap hit in stats. It is a perfect compliment. That is. Like Puffy and a casino line of credit. Oh, wow. Wow. There look you go. at that. Uh, so Trade Center, very exciting. i got to admit, I'm a little discombobulated. This is always turns into a very busy week because you're getting pulled in directions, promoting Trade Center. You're trying to get all your stuff together. You're trying to be researched. And then you got other stuff. Like I have a giant giraffe right now in my uh, in my dressing room. Seriously. Yeah. 
Mm. Not a real. Oh, uh, I guess I won't oh. say that. But there's a gir- there's a, a large giraffe in my dress. So this is some of the hijinks that you've come up with. Eh, this year. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of pressure on you this this show. It's not pressure. funny. It's on you. Yeah. <laughs> but comedy's comedy's hard, and my philosophy's always been: you only if ten percent of the people laugh, that's the comedy I go for. So that's could be rough because ninety percent of people go. Burr, burr, burr. I tend not to make that sound. Uh, we've had good effect. moments, and we've had bad moments. Maybe that guy that played those songs on Trace there, he was yeah. great. Yeah, that was my favorite one. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we we did that two years. I, yeah, I yeah. mean, we could have you back every year, but I always no, 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 not no, like no. to milk things. No, no, you're absolutely right. Maybe I, retro, like the 20th anniversary of Trade Center, which is coming up, I believe. Really? Wow. Yeah. Jesus. We've been doing the full-length show since 2003. 2004 was the year that Bertuzzi hit more. And that was... That was I was that, in that. That, that was the, the, the... I believe that that incident was mm-hmm. really what put us on the map as far as Trade Center. Well, if I, if I remember correctly, 2003, I believe we were on the air 11 to 5 or 12 to 5 or something like that. And then we'd already made the decision to come on at maybe 10 or 9 on 2004. And then Bertuzzi hit more and uh, my boss called me at 3.30 in the morning and said, you got to get in here. And um, I came in to go on the air, and it was myself and Troy, one camera, and we're the only people in. And the, but the control room crew was in and said that we're going. We're going right now, 5.30. We had no lights. So yeah. he had a bash light on his camera <laughs> and me by myself. And I'm like, this is ludicrous. Who was watching? Uh, well, probably no one. And then we, we ended up going on the air. Glenn Healy showed up, and we went on the air together, him and me, at 6.00. And did a couple of hours, and everybody else sort of showed up at, at 8. And that was, since then, it's been 8 a.m. every single freaking year. But I think, uh, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, it was the night before, the Bertuzzi thing happened the night before. Correct. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. At late, late, West Coast game. Yeah, so exactly. it happened at, uh, like, I didn't know, I tried to go to bed at, you yeah. know, 11 or 11.30 that night yeah. to get a good night's sleep. And, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, I was, work- that, I was working I was that mayhem. night in the newsroom, and I saw it happen. I said, this isn't good, and so I just got the hell out of there. No. <laughs> No, <laughs> it's gonna keep me up late. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was an awful incident, but it in I guess in some ways that that gave birth to the long all day. So trade who's center. who's had it worse since then? More or you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, what other moment we got? We we sort of done the favorite moments over the years. They're doing one I think on TSN.ca where you have to vote for your favorite moment. Uh, Gino and the llamas. That was uh, that's still one of my favorites I, because. That's funny. Yeah. Well, it was so it was so dumb. There was a llama chase in where, like Arizona or something, the week before. Yeah. And uh, Billy Dotson, our producer, I, th- I think I have to give him credit. He said we should do something with llamas, and then it ended up Gino. And Gino's just perfect for something. He is. Like he that. does uh, give it his all. <laughs> Actually, my favorite moment that will be overlooked on that show is I think before Gino chased the llamas, we had the llamas in the studio, but we made a point of not referring to them. So we were in the middle of a panel, like Ferraro, Maguire, whoever it was, Marty, and the llamas just walked behind us, and we made no, <laughs> but zero they, reference I, to them. I can kind of remember that, but did, were they just running free, or was there like somebody holding I them? I think there was a handler yeah, of some yeah, degree. Yeah. yeah, there was. I remember that. I'll tell you, um, I mean, and, and I refer to uh, the, my, my portion of, of Trade Center. Mm-hmm. The, I think for me, I had the, a unique view of that whole thing because I could see everything. I could see the report, the trade. Yeah, you breakers. had your guitar just up on the. Uh, up yeah, on I had the I had a, like a perch. There, right? I had a perch uh, up, so I could see I could see behind the scenes all the camera work. I could mm-hmm. see the people hitting on CP24, uh, Puffy, and those guys working the phones. It was incredible. I wish I had a camera on me right. because I could uh, to, to see actually what goes into that day. What was, was your incredible. favorite song that day? Those two years, do you remember? By I- far, Bobby Lou. Bobby Lou, Bobby, Bobby Lou, what? Right? I just can't believe it's true. I never thought I'd see it the day we'd be back in FLA. Right. Oh, oh, you know what I mean? Right. And then I added a, I hope you like rubber. You know, like, you know, like, <laughs> we just had fun with it. It was yeah, great. Yeah, it, was, it was a good time. And Another the other one was the Marty St. Louis, because I had to make that up on the fly. You and I wrote the, the Bobby Lou one. Right. Um, And Marty St. Louis, uh, I think it got traded. I think it's traded uh, the Rangers. And I think right? I had a, a, a Congo thing. I guess, could it be? Could it be? be that Marty St. Louis has been traded or something like that. Yeah. And, then, and then my la- at the end was, who's going to break the news to Steven Stamkos? <laughs> <laughs> what was the one about Dubnik? Because that was one of my favorites, too. Ah, Doobie, Doobie. Doobie, Doobie. Doobie. No, it was, oh. I'm going to sing the Scooby-Doo song. No, no, anyway. no I, I don't remember it, but I, remember, I, I knew that we had that in the can as well. Right. I'll uh, try to get Stoff to look it up. Doobie, Doobie, Doobie. We should have never doubted you. Very few parts are getting through. 
I don't even know what year that thing was. Um, I think it was. I think it was the second year that we did it. Right. Could it be yeah. that Marty St. Louis is <laughs> on the move from Tampa to NYC? Tell me why, Stevie, why you don't see eye to eye with your captain? What you gonna do about Marty St. Louis? And who's going to break the news to Steven Stamkos? <laughs> nice. That was, that, yeah, I, I love that because... Uh, and you just made that one up on I the fly. I had to make that up because it, it happened, right? That, and that, that was a pretty eventful day, too. Yeah. yeah. And singing to Brian Burke, too. Of the, the Burke the, one was good. <laughs> I need a Burke interview. I need a Burke interview. <laughs> yeah. He's going to get angry. Does his he? tie's going to be loose. going to be loose. <laughs> Uh, we can't talk about him Fun. anymore. No. So I'm oh, is he, is he going to be on the show again oh, this year? I, I don't think he will do a Berkey interview. <laughs> that would be you should, you, you should definitely put the request in, though. Yeah, yeah. No, God love Berkey. Um, I have a... Uh, oh, the other one I liked. Uh, when Jay Baruchel... Jay Baruchel read the details of a trade. There was a trade that was made that was so confusing oh, yeah. and had so many details... And we had Baruchel, the thespian actor, read out the details and the conditions of this trade. And uh, that was just one of my favorite things. Should Washington sign Shattenkirk to a standard player contract that includes the 2017 through 18 season? Or should Washington advance to the third round of the 2017 NHL playoffs? And Shattenkirk plays in at least 50.0% of Washington's playoff games in the first two rounds of said... <laughs> There's more. Lock up your daughters. The Blues shall receive Washington's own next available draft pick two rounds later, gotcha, than the earliest draft pick received by Washington in exchange for Shattenkirk. <laughs> it was just very bizarre, but uh, the, the more bizarre, the better, right? Yeah, That's the way it's supposed to be. I hope this year, we don't have as many shenanigans. We have some stupidness, but... I think there's enough this year that this actually might... I've been making fun of how bad trade deadline has been for years now. It's been bad the last It has two. been bad. Yeah. And, but I, and people watch anyway, and I've always thought it's kind of like rubberneckers at accident scenes. People want to watch and see how the hell are we going to fill these 10 hours or whatever it may yeah. be. But, you know, if Stone goes on the market and Ottawa doesn't deal them before, the, before uh, Monday, it'll be a nuts day or Panarin, any of those guys. Yeah. There's more quality this year than there's been ever. And you know what? I, people always, we joke around on Twitter whenever there's a deal that a part of me dies. Uh, <laughs> but truly, you don't need them to wait till Monday. Even if they happen Saturday and Sunday, it, 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 they're, it they're fresh sure. enough that it gives you stuff to talk about. But it is more exciting when it happens as right. you're doing it during sure. the day. Let's play the Puckpedia theme because I have, uh, I'm going to do a version of Two Truths, One Lie relating to Trade Center. Oh, nice. Let me tell you about Puckpedia. Snaps, contracts, and caps, it's all there for you. One-stop shop. For your hockey information, it's a new sensation. So log on, log on, log on. If you get the puck, go to puckpedia.com. I've uh, I didn't think two truths, one lie would work. So I have like four truths, two lies. Oh, it might even be five. Now this is all about the trade deadline. I got to tell you, I did this three minutes before we started taping. And so they're not necessarily great. <laughs> and you also know... I've I don't know if they're true or lies. The, the, other, the other problem is you know them. I almost think this yeah. should be for Stoff. Yeah. Lester, maybe, but he's yeah. been so following. And I know Stoff is followed, but hasn't been a part of it. No, so they, they are a long show. I don't always pay attention. Though. Right. <laughs> what is this Trade Center thing? <laughs> <laughs> so Stoff... Uh, well, I'll give them out to you guys. And if yeah. you guys don't know, you can weigh in. But I think Puffy should be taken out of this edition. Yes. Uh, four truths, one, two lies. Might be five. I can't remember. Let's go through it. A player once told me he found out he was traded while sitting on the toilet watching us. That's one. I once took a call live on the air, said, guys, I have to take this. It's important. Just to make myself look good. Walked off. It was my daughter, actually, who called me. Mm. I once had to call a GM and a team president after Trade Center and apologize after cutting the GM off 10 seconds into our interview, putting him on hold, and never getting back to him. That's number three. Once told a player where he was traded live on the air, he had no clue. Number four. Number five. An analyst once had to do two hours of the show with only one shoe after stepping in llama poopy. In the hallway outside the studio. One analyst, two hours, poopy. Uh, this is number seven. Okay, so two lies, 
five truths. Oh Once got sued by a player and had to apologize on air for something I wasn't even aware had happened during the show. Those are the seven elements, stuff. Mm-hmm. You have to pick two lies in there. All right, I was trying to keep up, but I only got six elements. <laughs> okay. Let's <laughs> do your best on the lies. All right. Um, you want me to repeat them and you can just say, why don't well, I I'm repeat gonna, them? I'm going to knock off the ones I think are true. All right. Uh, you told the player they were traded on the air. I think that's true. Correct. Uh, sued by player. I'm going to say that's true. Accurate. Love you, Joffrey Lupel. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, let's see here. The shoe in the llama poop. You said that was an insider who stepped in it? I said it was an insider or analyst. Okay. I'm going to say that one's true because those things do have to okay. go somewhere. Uh, apologize to GM. Fake to call the walk off. I definitely believe that. So I'm going to say the apologize to a GM and the toilet watching were false. All right. Uh, do you want to weigh in, Lester? I believe that the llama poop is false. Okay. And I'm going to say on the toilet, the player on the toilet is false. Puffy, you should get all these right, but let's see what you do. I agree with Lester. The uh, llama poop is false. Stoff was wrong. You would have heard about that. The uh, calling the GM was actually accurate. That was uh, Jarmo Kakalainen of the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets and John Davidson. I had to call them both. They were very angry after we that. said... Uh, this is a great story. We're finally giving some time to Columbus. Uh, finally up and coming. Going to head to the playoffs. Yarmo, uh, congratulations. Great job. Jo- Yarmo, hold on a second. We got a deal. Never got back to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still sorry for that one. Uh, a player once told us he found out he was traded while sitting on the toilet. Ron Tugnut. Really? Oh. Accurate. I believe Ottawa to Calgary or Calgary to somewhere. Okay. Something like that. So uh, the thing about the uh, the other lie... The yeah. llama was a lie, and I would never took a call from my daughter yeah, and pretend, I, I pretended that... that uh, uh, there you go. All right. right. Good segment from Puckpedia. Very Puckpedia good. Trade Center segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have... What do we got next? Oh, let's get... Uh, you know what? We haven't had Puffy in a while. That's, our, that's, a, that's the end of our Trade Center preview. Do you think that Bob and Dregs and Pierre had more, uh, more stuff in there than us? Yeah, they don't have the Matthews to Edmonton for Connor McDavid deal that I just broke on my phone. Boom. Wow. This happened. Is it confirmed or just pending? It's confirming. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the problem with the Bobcast, yeah. they could do all this Duchesne, Panarin talk. Those guys get Del Tomorrow Bobcast irrelevant Boom. by the weekend. Exactly. Ours is going to live in perpetuity. 100%. You can listen to this after Trade Center. Yeah. Still, Still funny. Fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's get to, uh, what was I going to do next, stuff? <laughs> We missed you, Puffy. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, I know Bump didn't. No, Bump really. <laughs> Basically, my favorite thing he said was, uh, if he dies, you just got to get on with it. <laughs> like, Drago had more sympathy for Apollo Creed than that. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. I got to say, Bump, you know, Bump's been a guest before, but usually you've been here, except to the Cabot, I think the Cabot yeah. pod last year, which, by the way, our friends at Cabot, we're trying to uh, redo the uh, Cabot pod again this year. Um... Yeah, but Bump was thriving in that chair. I think yeah. he really felt like he'd found a home there. Yeah, yeah he did a good job. He did a good yeah. job. I think I the only say. reason he didn't make it the next week was some sort of uh, that apocalyptic storm. Oh. He had to take care of his family. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Tough break, Bump. <laughs> weak. Weak. Weak excuse. All right. Uh, we've missed Puffy's hypothetical, so bring it to us. Uh, well, uh, Is it a Trade Center edition? Uh, no. <laughs> I did good. notice that you had mentioned on one of the, the podcasts I wasn't here mm-hmm. about your love of Ted Bundy. Well, I mean, uh, love of the uh, story, uh, not uh, the man himself. Appreciation for uh, what he did. <laughs> I don't that's, have how, that's how I took it. That's how I took it. All right. It. <laughs> well, I have a hypothetical on two gentlemen who uh, both have had interesting. You were into lives. the Ted Bundy. Too. I did. You I, watched I did. Uh, I was, what the Dateline or the Dateline, uh, 2020? 2020 was so good. Yeah. Um, two different shows. You watched okay. the 2020 version. 2020 okay. version. I yeah. will watch the Netflix one. Right. So this is a question for you guys. If you had to be one of these two men, okay. but this is post-arrest, so you're not doing the crimes. Okay. It's like, you know, because... <laughs> okay. So would you rather be Ted Bundy or Bernie Madoff? 
<laughs> now, I'll give you some things to think about. Okay. Okay. So, Ted Bundy, we know, is a serial killer who did a lot of bad things right. to women. Killed 30-odd women. Now, when Bernie Madoff was doing his crimes, he was just a really rich guy. So, he's living a pretty good life. So, oh. probably advantage Bernie Madoff there. Well, wait a second, though. You said none of that matters, though. But it matters for your post-life, your, the thoughts of being the guy. Oh, you're, so it, it's you're, basically in your head. Yeah. What so you, you are, you've either you killed after. killed thirty people and ruined all their families' yeah. lives, or mm. you've destroyed all the lives of, of the people that trusted you yes. and your family. And yes. we should say one of I watched the Bernie Madoff. Uh, I think it was HBO or something. Yes, did a it was movie. HBO. His one of his sons committed suicide. Well, that's also it's the a thing. Very heavy topic. Post post the uh, the rest. Bernie Madoff. Both of his sons have been have died. Now, did wow. Bernie Madoff get in a in the cushy uh, minimum security? I don't think so. Right? They probably tossed him in max. No, I think he went into maximum security. Wow. Right. Uh, now Ted Bundy does go into the electric chair. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. That wasn't very good. Either. So <laughs> that factors Sorry. into our decision. That does because that's coming. Your post arrest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But so De- Ted Bundy did have a child while in prison. Right, he was allowed to fornicate. Yes. I saw that. So how, wow. did, how did they let that happen? How do you uh, kill yeah. thirty women and they let you come in? Yeah, and, he got married post arrest. I know. And and there's a there's a whole other podcast. Is uh, these women, or I guess in the case perhaps men, if the women are in prison, who marry these killers? Yeah, yeah, it, convicts. It's, that's it's, a weird, it's prolific. Right? That's a weird thing. Stoff, you were going to say something. So everyone knows the crime, like people in society know the crimes know you've the committed crimes. as well. Know the they crimes you so. committed. Okay. You're the, yeah, the, you have these same backstories. <sighs> I, okay, I, here's what I'm going to do. I don't... <laughs> This like Ted Bundy was. This that, is so ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> I think this is easy. I, it's a me too. It's a slam dunk for me. Okay, go. You go first then. I'm I'm picking Madoff. Yeah, Madoff okay. all day. Yeah, like, but uh, Ted I, Bundy's I, I, played in the movies by Zac Efron. He's also played by uh, <laughs> while Bernie Mark Madoff Harman. got a ve- and Mark Harmon, both good-looking guys. While Bernie Madoff was played by uh, Robert De Niro. All right, so an I'm old a Robert De Niro. Great actor, though. These shoes? Yeah, but he's ugly. You got a pick on these shoes? These shoes? <laughs> oh, sorry, I want Zac to. Uh, Efron? Come Can on. I do a little preempt before my answer? Sure. I think what Ted Bundy did is awful. Terrible. All right, a terrible... Like it's, We're not arguing that. No. Hot okay, take. so let's... Can we remove all hot of that from... from let's <laughs> remove all of that from the equation. Of course. I'm going to choose Ted Bundy. <laughs> you, <laughs> why? Because I think that Bernie Madoff, uh, um, although a sociopath, has guilt and he's going to live out the rest of his years as the most hated man by his entire family uh the fact that his son committed suicide he has to live with and i think he will feel he does actually feel horrendous pain every day ted bundy the one thing about a psychopath or a sociopath is they feel no guilt yeah so i think ted lived out his days pretty content he didn't want to die he had a baby and he didn't want to die, but then he died. And then it's over with, yeah. and I'm gone. Yeah. So I want the Ted Bundy, short lifestyle, no guilt, death, over the Bernie Madoff, long life, guilt, pain. Mm. I completely agree with you. All right, wow. buddy. Yeah. Well, stop. So, that's why, that's why we have our own podcast, I guess. <laughs> the Lester and Stop Show. Stop and Lester. <laughs> I'm sure it's comforting for James that Papa agrees with him. <laughs> yeah, wait a second. What happened to me? I just, this... lo- I just love how two for ten. It's an even split on these two yeah, guys. And here's the, here's the other problem now is uh, in, we live in a world where everything gets taken out of context. Yeah. And so somebody will tweet, Duffy wants to be yeah. Ted Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> and my, you know, that will hurt my credibility. And listen, but, uh, certainly neither stuff or I want to be Bernie Madoff. But if you were saying if you had to choose one or yeah. the other. Well, before the arrest. Yeah. Before the arrest, Bernie. before the arrest, <laughs> cleaning up, Bernie. Oh yeah, rolling. Yeah, I definitely before the definitely before the arrest, I'd rather be Bernie Madoff. Right? Would you? What about before the arrest though? Because Ted broke out twice. Yeah, we went over with. Would you like to bend the Ted Bundy part where he's in the woods for three days, but he has no food? No, that does not sound like fun <laughs> no, at all. I don't think. But it so would be kind of cool to have escaped from prison or from custody. Like no, I would, that'd be a fun thing. I I would love to try that at yeah. some point in my lifetime. To yeah, if that. It's, that's a scenario we could do. And those like uh, cars that he drove, that's pretty. I like those B- VWs. It's a pretty cool car. <laughs> you know what? We, we have our segment. What you watching? What you watching? And another thing yep. that uh, was Westworld is another show that I've watched. Mm-hmm. Yes, great and show. And you, you touched on something. Uh, you'd like to try that escape scenario. Yeah. I am sure down the road we're going to have theme parks that are exactly that, well, like so Westworld. Yeah. What's what? 
Like, like what? <laughs> like, not like, not like Westbrook. What did you say? But, uh, <laughs> do you listen to me that when I'm talking to you? <laughs> no, I just said. <laughs> no, I just mean, like, the Westworld, the whole th- idea of Westworld is yeah. it's a theme park. Yeah, for, I haven't seen it whatever. yet. It's very cool. You it's the one with the dinosaurs, right? And the dinosaurs go crazy <laughs> no. and attack? <laughs> Uh, uh, Puffy's uh, Hypotheticals is brought to you by Untuck It. Hey, guys, never a good look when you untuck a long, bulky dress shirt. More than 50 sizing options. Every guy can find the perfect shirt at untuckit.com. And you, friends, you are Rubber Boots listeners. You can get a discount, 20% off your purchase using the promo code Rubber Boots. And you can visit the Untuck It uh, brand new first Canadian retail store in Sherway Gardens or shop online anywhere. Let's, let's play one so, more. You should probably mention that. Untuck it has nothing to do with Ted Bundy uh, or his crimes. The people at Untuck it would like to make clear that uh, they, they do not they do not agree with anything that Ted Bundy done. Uh, Bernie Madoff would not look good in no, an Untuck it no, shirt. No, look terrible. And they don't endorse uh, Ted Puffy Bundy. and Jimmy's endorsement Ted of Ted right. Bundy's life. Look I, right I'm sure at some Ted point, Bundy would probably look pretty good. Unfortunately, I'm sure at some point his shirt was untucked. Oh Jesus! <laughs> See, that's too far left. Yeah, you. Oh yeah, too I'm far. too far. Yeah. Right. You're just taking it. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't. You, did you miss it last week, Puffy? Uh, did you hear the Rod Smith version of the Untuck It song? No. Uh, let, uh, let's play that one for him. The moment I saw her, I knew it was on. Her eyes danced just as much as her smile. She looked me up and down and studied my every move. And as she grew near enough, she said. Said, I like your shirt. And I said, Thank you, babe. It's an untuck it. <laughs> untuck it. Cool, relaxed, comfortable. Sexy. Yeah, that's good. Sexy like right there. Really good. I hear we have something special for you today, folks. We have an edition of our uh, Dreams segment. Oh. Uh, brought to you by friends at Waimara. But the uh, perpetrator, the perpetrator of the dream, uh, the <laughs> perpetrator, uh, the dreamy, the, the dreamy, the the, the, the dreamer, star, the source, the star the of the dream, the uh, Christoph Momona, our producer, Momona. James has dreams, dreams he remembers. Stop. James has dreams, <laughs> dreams he Funny because I had a couple of dreams I was going to get into. I'm going to, uh, I'm compiling, I'm stockpiling the dreams for when we have more time on the pod. But uh, I, I want to hear Stoff's dream. On a related note, I don't know if you guys saw. I know you guys are big fans of it. Nyquil coming out with a new kind of Nyquil. Well, Seriously, Chris, really? Is it? Yeah, it's like some sort of icy blast or something. I don't know. <laughs> Wow. What does that I'm not mean? Kid- I'm not it, kidding. Is it going to make me go unconscious for 12 hours? It, it might. 12 days. I could only imagine the dreams off that. Brooksy, uh, you know, Brooksy's very natural. Yeah. She doesn't, but uh, she was having some trouble uh, a couple weeks ago, so yeah. I, I, she tried the NyQuil for the first time. Did she like it? Oh, yeah. And she, she, Brooksy doesn't snore usually. She was snoring. I actually taped her in the middle of the night snoring. I won't play that right now. That would, that would be mean. I think that, no, that, that, would, cr- that would cross It'd be creepy, line. but it wouldn't be mean. <laughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, she was just conked on the NyQuil, so... Sorry, so it's called VapoCool. Ooh, Vapo, Ooh. NyQuil VapoCool. Vapo cool. I immediately cool. thought of rubbing it on my balls. Do you I like... Don't know. Do you like- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's the first thing that came. I had well, you won't, well, you won't well, be able to get snipped. You won't be able to feel them anymore. Yeah, it's so it'll be it's perfect. <laughs> like, yeah. oh God. You could do an endorsement. Hi, hi. I'm uh, Sean Cameron, uh, Sean Puffy Cameron. I just got neutered, and my balls <laughs> have been aching. So that's why I use Nyquil Vapo Cool. <laughs> it brings feelings back to your balls. It knocks your balls out. All right, uh, uh, Stoff, get at it. All right, so this is a brief one. I had this dream a couple of weeks ago. I think it was uh, the day after editing one of these podcasts. So the whole thing starts off really hazy, but I realize I'm in the control room that I'm sitting in right now. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners, the way it's set up, there's a piece of glass and then you guys are on the other side. Right. Except in my dream on the other side, it was the outdoors. It was like a field. Oh, this is like like Stranger Things with the upside down? Uh, Well, not that terrifying. It was a nice sunny day outdoors. And are we uh, We're outside? Uh, so I don't see anyone yet, but oh. I see like a figure in the distance, and it's someone playing guitar, but I can't make out who mm-hmm. it is. Thinking probably Lester. Uh, well, could be. As we go along in the dream, I recognize that the song they're playing, but I can't quite put my finger on it. But I know it's a song I'm very familiar with. 
So as I look closer and closer, it turns out it is Lester. And Lester is playing Serious Lester, <laughs> which is a little odd. Yeah, that's our song. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. as he finishes and that last note hangs in the air, he leans into the mic and says, did you get that? I give him a thumbs up and no joke. This is what he says. Good. I always hated the way he did it. And then I woke up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's good. Oh, that's hilarious. Man. That's man. very funny. I feel like behind the scenes, maybe Lester's been bashing me, and that's why that was planted well, in your head. He's like, I'm sick my head. of this guy. That's why does he funny. always sing on the pod? That's my bit. That's, that's hilarious. Ah, that's hilarious. Well, that's heavy. Well, backstory from that song for mm-hmm. our listeners is that you, uh, James, had, had, had said you need something... Um, a guitar mm. piece that yeah, was like sort of mellow. Sort of mellow when you didn't tell me why, and then you went and sang lyrics over it. So right. it's pretty good, right? You know, we, we probably haven't played uh, that song in more than a in a bit when yeah. you when you put the pot in. Give them give, give people a good thirty second rendition of Serious Lester so they know what it's all about. He's Serious Lester, the conscience of the podcast. When we're getting too high You bring us down real fast That was uh, Dreams Bought You by the beautiful Weimara Resort, which has, uh, by the way, a, uh, a, uh, a sale on the villas right now. You can get 40% off. You want to book one of the lovely villas. Uh, oh, that's very good. The uh, villa trip comes your way in October. Jeff O'Neill still very bitter about the villa trip. James, I don't give a shit about your podcast. I was tweeting about Mike Johnson, something completely different today, and yeah. O-Dog shot back with, I bet you he's going to get a trip to the Weimara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw Weimara. you did that uh, very nice thing for that uh, couple, the Ducks fans that were traveling around Canada. Yes, yes, yes. We talk, talked about that on the last pod, if you'd have paid attention and listened. Well, I just wanted to say that's very nice of you to well, do that. You. Did, yeah. you, did you reach out to uh, them to do it? Like, how did that even come about? No, I sent a... Uh, I just put a tweet out when they when they somebody had tweeted out how you know they they had they're holding the signs it was the saddest thing ever you remember they had the sign where you put yeah. the check mark with all the and cities they had all X's. Mm-hmm. and they just got their asses kicked in every city yes and so I said we should do something for them and Bruce texted me and said uh, hey I'll give them wow. four free nights and what then guy. O has just gone off since then wow oh yeah <laughs> he's he's just been extremely bitter I, yes. we might have to give him the fifth bedroom just to appease him eh. wow. Yeah. yeah, he's he's not going to take any I, of I vote back. for Lindsay Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, if it's a decision between O-Doc and Lindsay yeah. Hamilton. You're out, though. That's fine. Well, wait By a second, the way, though. If, if, if all the wives are there, you don't want you probably don't want Lindsay there. because if you, Do we I want no, O-Doc? I have no problem with that. <laughs> I have no problem yeah. with that whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Lindsay, O-Dog. by the way, is a very professional. I think I don't even know her status, but I'm guessing she has a lovely, lovely, lovely boyfriend, and so sure. you have no chance. But that's neither, neither here nor there. Plus, she's a professional; she would never mix. Yeah, no, nobody does that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on, hold on. Just what? before we just before we're talking about O Dog, uh, you saw the uh, the. Uh, Oh, uh, get married with overdrive. Thing? Yes. Okay. No, I, oh. I saw a little okay. bit of the clip from him. It was amazing. He looked it like was, a mess. It, well, he was like the flower it's flat drum. money. <laughs> he was he, a flower boy. He's just going. But <laughs> his hair was like so disheveled. He looked like he had been in Vegas for six days. Get hitched with overdrive. With, and and he said he was coming from work. <laughs> I know. Well, he, <laughs> that's unbelievable. He shows up sometimes to the studio like that. Like he's got the real. He's got very good hair. Yeah. But it, it can go completely askew. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it looks like something about Mary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. <laughs> In fairness, though, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never he did know. a very good job with it. Anyway. Uh, we uh, apologized to our buddy Scott Reynolds last week, Puffy. We uh, we had Scott on, yes, our Berlin correspondent, and he had a whole segment prepared for us, kind of like a two truths, one lie, nice. a quiz for us, and we had to cut him off because we were getting kicked out of our studio, and so. Uh, What he wanted, and I thought this was a better question for you than even the rest of us, he presented three Berlin clubs. He was taking on a a tour of the Berlin club scene. Perfect. And you had to pick which one of these was a fake club and which which two were real clubs. Oh. So we're going to quickly replay the clips. Is that right, Stoff? All right, let's start with the first club. Pay attention. Um, It has a strict dress code. If you want to get in, you need to be wearing fetish or BDSM gear or be partially or fully nude. Okay. Uh, public open acts of sex are both uh, allowed and encouraged in this club. It's very famous for that. Okay. And some of the DJs you could find there this weekend would be DJ Bionic, 
Italo Brutalo and Eclair Fifi. Mm. You know what I just thought? What? I never actually got the answer from a which one of these is real. No. <laughs> See, I was going to ask before we started, but so, I just figured you I guess, did. <laughs> it, might be, it might be the cliffhanger part two. So while you play the second club, I'll see if he answers my email really quickly. Well, that one's true for sure. Okay, so let's go, let's go to the second one. Club number two, Griesmüller. Griesmüller is in an abandoned grain mill, and it hosts a number of famous parties, including one of Berlin's most famous gay parties called the Horse Meat Disco. Their Valentine's Day party, which is uh, happening tonight, is simply titled Mango. <laughs> Very nice. And their party, their party on the first of May, which is a major holiday in Germany, is called Fist of May. And some of the DJs you could find there this weekend would include Intergalactic Gary, okay. DJ Overdose, and DJ Minus Minus. <laughs> mm. I do love oh. DJ Minus Minus. Okay, so do you want to hear the third one before we uh, you make your decision? Sure. Let's see, of course. Number three, Drachenzunge, which is German for dragon tongue. It's in the basement of a foreman former prison and was once briefly owned by David Bowie and is known for its in-house tattoo parlor. It's also known for hosting Berlin's best gay New Year's party titled New Year's Steve. And if you went there this weekend, you would be able to hear the talents of DJ Scissors, Die Großmutter ohne Schatter, which is German for the grandmother without a shadow, right. and DJ Hitler. But DJ Hitler is H-I-T hyphen L-E-R, so it's like Hit like no. hit song. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. Um, hey, Stoff, do you have the you know the hold the Jeopardy hold music? While I try to call Scott Reynolds. Well, uh, well, I'd forgotten to forgotten to ask Scott which one it was. <laughs> but Stoff, the magical producer, has dialed up Berlin, and Scott Reynolds happened to be ready, sitting by his phone. Where are you? Are you at a, are you at a club right now? No, no, it's Wednesday, Matt. I'm uh, <laughs> getting on a. I'm just about to get on the subway. I'm just going downtown, but uh, no club today, no. All right, so which one was the lie of the three clubs? Uh, the, the last one was the lie. Oh, damn it. Ah. <laughs> and it was number two. Is there no grandmother thought, without a shadow? Is that not a real DJ? No. Oh, I, would I made that up myself. I would, oh. so, go, I would so go see I that DJ. I thought it was Grishmula. Uh, <laughs> I liked that the one in the, it was in an old, an old jail. Yeah. It hot. Um, so yeah, I we, made that up. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, once again, uh, we've called you right at the end. We've buried you at the bottom of the pod. I'm sorry about that, but uh, we're going to decide how much of your song we can play right now. So, uh, oh, okay. Uh, hang up and listen, <laughs> caller. All right, thanks, buddy. All right, no problem. That's Scott Reynolds from Berlin, Germany. So Scott, uh, who sent us a bunch of songs before, mm -hmm. he <clears> sent <throat> us a song, but he, he warned us last week that. The content might be inappropriate. Okay, I had a, I didn't listen to the whole thing. I listened to the first thirty seconds, and it's a it's a kind of a love song about Jake Muzzin's beard, but he makes it, he uses it as a metaphor, I believe, for um women who like to keep it au naturel. Oh, oh so okay. uh, but I we this is a family pod, so I'm going to yes. listen as far as we can feel we can listen, and then we're going to cut it off. That feel, is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. All right, stop. My the... songs aren't dirty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, play this Jake Muzzin uh, song. Starting on left defense for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Number eight in your programs and number one in my dreams. Do his looks at his roster and he could see what the Leafs really needed was a real big D so we brought in a man who could help in a hurry he's strong and he's fast and by God is he furry some like it smooth like Lou Lamorel but a real man prefers it I need more than a little peach fuzz And I can't get enough of that hairy muzz When I close
close my eyes, I can almost feel it tickling the tip of my nose, prickly and yet somehow so warm and inviting. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I think it's worse than you cut it off. Wow. Oh, that was wow. a great, great song. That was uh, very, very well done. But we do have to uh, uh, keep our Bell Media bosses oh, yes, in, yes. in mind. And exactly. I, did run, I did run this by one of them. They weren't too uh, They'll be fine with sure. the old Ted Bundy chat. <laughs> <laughs> but not pure lovemaking. Yeah. Um, uh, we love Scotty Reynolds. I would like to say, if you want to hear the full version of that song, it's available on our website. But we don't have a website. Um, we have an Instagram. Could it, could it get put on there? <laughs> I don't, can you put a whole song on Instagram? Uh, no, there's only so nice. We need our With intern. cover. One, know, minute, one minute's the I think You know what? Yeah. I just remembered Zach Phillips, our intern, wrote me and said, hey, I'm available to come in on these dates, and I never got back to him. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Saturday the 7th? He's probably, <laughs> yeah. probably sitting outside. Yeah, he should be calling Scott Reynolds, not me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. I uh, know we'll have Zach in here soon. Point. All right, we got to go. Uh, I hope you enjoy Trade Center. Uh, Stoff, you'll get this out before Trade Center, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. And uh, <laughs> and uh, remember, to listen to this one before the Bobcast Trade Center preview because this has much more vital yes. vital information. Puffy had a lot of inside stuff in there. Yeah. Lester was providing some uh, stuff from his Montreal sources. Um, and and Stoff <laughs> with his... Uh, are there any Polish players in the NHL right now, Stoff? Uh, I don't think so. No. Full tech Volsky? Is Mary Chalkowski still playing? Or no? <laughs> not, Mary, not, yeah, not in the NHL, no. Volsky. He's a good the guy. Polish, the Polish. Bobby Vilt. Uh, enjoy Trade Bobby. Center. Pray for us that a lot happens. And uh, we're, I'm going to be exhausted next week. I was going to say take the week off, but we should to like some sort of post-Trade Center. Yeah, because there could be some hijinks that happens. <sighs> You know, the most exhausted day I have I have of the year is Tuesday after Trade Center, especially because we have a game after Trade Center. We have a lease game. You know that, right? With a pregame yeah, show? I saw yeah, saw that. And then I have a Sens game on no, Tuesday. No, no pregame show. Oh, no pregame show? Uh, we look right. today. Well, we'll try to do one next week, and we'll do a post-Trade uh, Center recap. Thanks yeah. to you all for uh, listening, folks. Uh, thank you for your dreams, Christoph. Uh, that was e- a great dream. Evil I Lester in your yes. dream. Welcome back, Puffy. Thank you. And we'll see you next week on the Rubber Boots Pod. Serious Lester The conscience of the podcast When we're getting too high You bring us down real fast Getting too crazy You'll calm us down real fast Serious Lester The conscience of the podcast When we're getting too high Bring us down real fast, fast. Serious Lester, Lester. Don't ever change. Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? tonight?